Welcome back. In the next stage of automation, we want to be able to count the short blocks. To achieve this, the logic section of the machine is going to need a signal to tell it when a short block is detected. So, we'll position another normally open limit switch just above the conveyor and connect it to an electrically operated counter. Now, each time the lower limit switch is activated, it closes, sending a yes signal to the counter. But notice that this switch will be closed by both the short blocks and the long ones. Since we only want to count the short blocks, we cannot wire the switch directly to the counter. Instead, we will have to wire it in series with the other set of normally closed contacts in the control relay. This means that for power to reach the counter, both the lower limit switch and the contacts on the control relay must be closed. Notice that the symbol for normally closed contacts is shown with a diagonal line through the center of the contact. This tells us that in the normal or inactive state, the contacts are passing power. Now let's examine carefully the operation of our counter circuit. When a long block passes by, it actuates both limit switches. The lower switch closes, sending a yes signal to the logic. But because the upper limit switch closes at the same time, the control relay is energized and its contacts change to their active state, which means that these normally closed contacts open, switching off the power flow to the counter, and so the count is inhibited. We can explain the power flow like this. Although the counter received a yes or on signal from the lower limit switch, it also received a no or off message from the control relay contacts. And since in a series circuit all inputs must be on to pass power, the counter will not respond to the tall block. But when a short block passes by, only the lower limit switch is closed. And since the upper limit switch is not activated, neither is the control relay, so its contacts remain inactive, which means that its normally closed contacts will remain closed and power will flow to the counter, recording a count. It is by combining a number of on-off signals in a particular order that the logic section of an automatic control system makes decisions and directs the flow of power through the system. Now, these switching arrangements are usually recorded on a ladder logic diagram, which tells us how the input, logic and output circuits are arranged and identified. As we learn more about control circuits, we'll use a ladder logic diagram to explain the automatic control features of the sorting machine. After the break, we will introduce the programmable logic controller and explain how it can be used to control a system like our sorting machine. Mm -hmm.